I was at Going Gamers another day, another video. In this one, we're going to end up tackling an extremely sensitive subject in my eyes. Hopefully this is a one-off video. I don't like, I didn't like making this video and I don't want to make another video like this. I'm not doing this for subscriptions. I'm not doing this for clout or reputation or anything like that. Um, it's, it's not something I want to tackle again, but at the end of the day, I've got a message that I feel that needs to get out there. This is aimed at top tier streamers who stream on Twitch. More than anything, they're the ones who can make real change. This is aimed at um, the higher ups at Amazon, which will probably never ever see this video. And more than anybody as well, it's also aimed at parents like me. who have got children, young children, who are into gaming, who watch streaming, and it's something that they want to do later on in life. I mean, who doesn't at that age in this day and age? Um, this is for you as well. The reason why this is aimed at these people is because mainly Twitch's terms of service allows anybody who's 13, 14, I think it's 13, um, as young as, to be able to create an account on their platform. And once you've done that, you can watch other streamers, you can watch it without the account, but you can watch other streamers and you can create your own channel um, and start streaming yourself. My youngest is 10 years old and she wants to become an avid YouTuber. Um, I've given the pep talk, you know, it's one of the, it's, it's, it's something that's very, very hard to do. It's a lot of time, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of hope, a lot of despair and so on and so forth. Um, but at the end of the day, if she gets to the edge and she still wants to do that, I'll allow her to do it. I'll stand by her a thousand percent and I'll make sure she's safe in doing so. When I say safe, I'll make sure she'll be going nowhere near Twitch. What I'm going to do is um, link an article in the description of this video. And then I'm going to link another video so you can go and see it for yourself by a guy called Destiny who talks about this subject. Now, um, I used to follow Destiny and I stopped because um, he rubs me the wrong way. Let's just put it like that. The guy's a very, very clever, intelligent guy, but we, um, we'd collide on various opinions. Let's just put it like that. Um, one thing for sure is when you watch this video, you get so far through it and he starts to go on about times when he was streaming Witcher 3 back in the day. And what he'd end up doing is every time he ended a stream, one day he'd end up hosting uh, a boy who's got less than 100 views or 100 subscribers, one or the other, I can't remember, or a girl the next day who's in the same situation. And he'd continue doing that and hosting is basically all his viewers end up in their channel watching their stream, right? And one thing he started noticing, I mean you'd have to watch the video because he words it the way he does, but he started noticing that there would be a Twitch staff member in all of these chats these girls have got. He never says they were in the boys chats or he noticed them in the boys chats as well. What he says is every time he hosted a girl who was a very small streamer on Twitch, less than 100 views or 100 subs, there'd always be a Twitch staff member there. Now, as he said it, I thought, I've got to play devil's advocate here, because at the end of the day, they might be there to help grow the channel, they might be there, you know, commenting on um, what you can and can't get away with, or, you know, being able, just there being able to give them advice on helping the channel grow, right? But then I thought to myself, how come he's only noticed it with girls and he's never noticed it with boys? Yeah, how come this is just happening with the girls? Seems strange. Now, I've always known there's something wrong with Twitch. Very wrong with the way it's managed and so on and so forth. I created a channel on there. It was not before, it was after I built the ch uh, I'd made the channel. I'd not built it or anything like that. I just, you know, um, started it. That's when I noticed, started to look into it all and I realised... This is more about favours and what you, can you do for me and I can do for you than, you know, putting in a hell of a lot of hard work to grow your channel. Don't get me wrong, people do, but, you know, if you rub somebody the wrong way at Twitch, they can just annihilate your channel and give you no reason why. And all that hard work, all that effort, you know, all that money you're relying on and that income and that, it's just gone overnight. It could destroy you. And I don't want to have to, you know be in the right circles and you know pretend to be into this and that just to be able to grow a channel on Twitch so yeah I took a step back I was like no that's not for me it's apparent to anybody the way that they handle bans suspensions and partnerships that there's something very wrong with the decision making 
Um, it's a simple. It's a, that is a matter of fact. Now, this girl a week ago, she ends up jumping on Twitter, and uh, she does a Mewtwo, a me too, a Mewtwo, a me too. I'm very very sorry about that. Uh, she does a me too, and she starts writing a story of her experiences with a certain individual who is in a very high position on this streaming platform twitch the world's biggest streaming platform now take note amazon bought this streaming platform for 970 million dollars that's not chump change that's a vast fortune they spent on that right so you'd want to protect it you want to look after it you want to make sure that it's got good pr and people aren't trying to tarnish the name especially your own employees right in light of everything that's gone on right now my biggest advice to amazon to Jeff and his boys well I can't pronounce his second name so I'm not going to pretend to even though I don't like you what I'd end up doing if I was you is I'd end up getting 12 private investigators some of the cream of the crop the best of the best from around the world money is no option these people would be highly trained um, when it comes to cyber warfare when it comes to interrogation techniques when it comes to deception yeah the trade crafts like that they'd be very very highly skilled in They'd be the best you can get for that field of tradecraft. I'd end up making sure that all my Twitch staff, who's been there for more than a split second, no matter how long, no matter how far down or high, how far up, every single one of you signs an agreement where you're all right with this investigation taking place and being a part of it. Every single one of you would hand over every one of your cell phones, your laptops, your uh, tablets, your iPads, your PCs in the office, your PC at home, get in your car, drive home, put your PC in the boot of your car and bring it here now, right? And I'd have my team pull roll over every single bit of it. That thing you thought you deleted off your hard drive, that's coming back. And then it'd be, oh, you've had your phone for a year, but you've been working here for four years. So what phones and what, what were you using then? Oh, I was using this, I lost it, I was using that, I broke it. Don't you worry about it, because this agreement you've signed allows us to be able to contact your internet providers through these periods of times, or your cell phone provider you ever had a contract with, or whatever, you know, you have packages through it, and it'll be on file there one way or another. Oh yeah, it will. So that's what I'd end up doing. And this team, as they investigate and investigate and investigate, they'd compose up three different piles. Pile number one is all your personal crap that no one gives a shit about. Pile one will end up in a shredder and then an incinerator. And it'll only exist wherever they put it. It's got nothing to do with Twitch, it's got nothing to do with us, it's your own personal crap. Pile number two would be a pile of every single instant where any of the Twitch staff, from the bottom to the top, have ever used their position for any type of personal gain. They've used their influence for any type of personal gain. Any type of instances where they've done something I'd consider unusual activity aimed at a specific group of people or a specific audience. Every single piece of information anywhere near like that had all be flagged. And then anybody who has got anything in that pile, once the investigation is over, I'd walk right up to the office, right up to the desk, and I'd say, you've got five minutes to pack your shit in a box and get the hell out of this building. Your contract's terminated, you piece of shit. If you're not out of this office, out of this building, five minutes, I'm going to make sure that the two security guards that escort you out are the heaviest-handed security guards that work in this building. And they won't be throwing out you, you out the front door, they'll be throwing you out the back door. CCTV in the stairway of the basement might not be working too well. You might end up falling down the stairs and having an accident on the way out, you absolute scumbag. Might not have to take it that far in the end, but that's what I'd do. And then pile number three, it'd be all the criminal shit these people have ever pulled off. Anything that they've got that I, you know, that is law-breaking, that I'd end up going straight to any of the authorities it should do, whether it's local, state, federal, whatever and then that's up to the authorities to deal with them individuals. Once the investigation is over, any positions that need filling, I'd make sure that they are filled by some of the most, um, how would you put it now, some most sincere people, most business savvy, sensible people you can get. You've got integrity, yeah, 
and are not the type of scumbag to allow their dirty, horrible urges to get the best of them. That's what I'd fill them positions with. Then I'd reform Twitch. People who cover bans and suspensions, yeah, they work in a completely different city, never mind a completely different building than people who handle partnerships, and so on, and so on. They're no longer departments where one, one, one sector can become buddies with another sector and they're doing each other favours, you know, and they're doing things that they shouldn't really be doing, like, say, for example, um, making sure somebody gets partnered on the platform even though they don't meet the criteria and they've never applied for it. Mm -hmm. Things like that would stop. And if I found out any employee was doing that, after all this crap, they'd be terminated as well in the exact same way. It'd be in your contract to make sure you'd never, ever even think of doing anything like that. And examples have been made. Then, after all of that, I'd look at all the accounts these people have suspended and why. I'd look at the context and I'd think to myself, you know, I'd have a group of people, is this fair? Was this person really permanently suspended for this reason back then? And if so, we're going to have to get in touch with this person and see if they want to come back streaming on the platform and we'll put a little incentive in there. We're going to make, you know, some real apologies and things like that. Um, but at the end of the day, this individual was banned from our platform over reasons that they shouldn't have been. Yeah, so that's another thing I'd end up dealing with. I doubt this will ever happen. But I'd make my findings as transparent as possible to the public and I'd issue statements and I'd be more transparent, you know, with bans and things like that in the future. If it's a legal issue, then that's a legal issue. You turn around and you say such and such a person has been permanently banned from our platform. We cannot disclose the reasons why due to legal reasons. But, you know, any information we get that comes forward that we can tell you, then we will do. But until then, we're really sorry that this is down to the authorities or law or solicitors or whatever. That's something they already promised and they're not doing, but... At the end of the day, I'd, I'd make a seismic shift throughout that entire business model that costs $970 million. Whoever's running that, geez. it looks like if you don't take action, say, for example, somebody posts a story on Twitter about an individual and seven days go by and there's no statements from Twitch about one of the highest employees they've got working there, makes you look complicit, makes you look like you're trying to cover up. Make sure you look like, you know, you're doing damage control and you're trying to protect this person. Why would anybody, yeah, be texting young girls, oh, I want to send you a Twitch Prime pink hoodie, I need your name, I need your address, I need your size for it, yeah? Why, why are they doing that with just girls that they're interested in? Why are Twitch staff lurking in young girls' streams? You've hardly got any views or anything like that. What, what, what's the ulterior motive behind all this? What have they got again? Why the hell is somebody in the position that they're in, you know, trying to take advantage of the way they are by turning around and saying, oh, yeah, I can send you uh, a plane ticket, yeah? It's only $100, and that can get you to PAX East where I've got you um, a pass for the gaming event. Yeah, because you, you know, it's, it's not even been a day of you actually being in conversation with her. Oh, you've been in the channel for a while, aren't you? Seeing what her hobbies and her interests are and things like that. What you can and can't relate to with this individual. This is extremely disgusting behaviour. This is systematic and a repeated pattern that's going on and on and on and on. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, he's not the only one, is he? I don't think this is the first or last we're going to wear about this. The reason why I'm making this video is because there are young kids who are streaming on that platform. There's young kids who want to stream on that platform. And what, is it going to be a few years down the line before they end up with that Twitch staff member in the freaking chat? Yeah? Seeing what the hobbies and interests are, seeing what they can relate to, seeing how they can get in there and befriend them and on and on and on before you know it, they're in a relationship, you know, this guy's sending them screenshots of his hotel bed suite and saying, oh, I wish you was here. Where is the professionalism in that? from the position he's in at Twitch, where's his integrity, where's his professionalism, where's his business sense? He's showing you time and time again, he is completely incapable of the position you've given him, and he should not be working in this industry anywhere at all ever again. But yet, a week goes by and you're silent, you say nothing about it. 
finally I'm going to end with this we get top streamers out there on Twitch who are going to act like they give a shit yeah I'd love I'd love right now to list all of you all of you who are going to act like you give a shit about this situation this girl's gone through and others like her but one thing you will not do and you should do is despite your differences um, you know people arguing over shitty charity events yeah over what they do and don't know I didn't mean that shitty charity events I meant you know the shit surrounding charity events that's what I mean um, but yeah people who are you know arguing over things like that over what they do know and what they don't know and you know weighing in on something that's got absolutely nothing to do with them these people need to put all the differences to one side if they really care yeah and they need to go on strike and they need to turn around to twitch and say we're not going to stream on your platform for a month unless you change all of this unless you launch a full internal investigation into every one of the employees at Twitch and we won't stream, we'll just refuse to do it we're not going to stream on YouTube, we're not going to stream on Facebook or maybe they do, maybe they go somewhere else and you know the audience goes with them but at the end of the day they go on strike and they do not stream on Twitch they don't earn in Twitch they don't earn a touch any money or anything and when you hit them in the wallets like that maybe they'll start understanding but if enough of you right as the community as big as you are get together and you say no not until this ends not until the people involved in this have gone then nothing will change it's as simple as that so you top guys out there you top girls out there yeah you proper streamers who make out you know you're really into all this and you're really dedicated and you're really you know behind these people who've gone through what they've gone through if you really give a shit that's what you'd do that's the video thanks for watching as again again i'm not doing this for reputation clout or anything like that i'm doing this because a message needs to get out there that these people are doing these things that they're doing yeah some of it's alleged some of it's full-blown proven yeah, these people are in the DMs, they're in the chats for a while, you know, and what are you doing? What the hell are you doing? There's words for it. We know what these words are. We know exactly what you're doing. It's as simple as that. So that's that. That's the video. Thanks for watching. If you want to hit that like button, hit that like button. Don't bother subscribing to the channel because it's, we don't make content like this. Usually it's me having a laughing video games with my friends. I never more want to make another video like this again. I'm absolutely disgusted with every single one of you at Twitch who are complicit in all of this. And I'm not the only one. I hope you freaking sort your goddamn heads out. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching.